Hello and welcome to our last part of Rubber Hose character animation. In this class we are going to learn how we can create an easy run cycle. At first we are going to break down the run cycle. And we see different run cycles. And this time we will work with Photoshop layers. We will learn how we can redesign them in the easiest way possible. How to animate one leg and loop it for the other one. We will learn how to work with graph editor with a simple bug exercise or how we can animate the path of objects using nodes and alternatively how to animate hairs using mask and our effect tool. For the class project, students will animate this character and they will face the same challenges that I will face in this class. Once again, welcome and let's start. When it comes to run or walk cycle, I usually spend half hour to find a reference. So in this video, we are going to break down the run cycle. Now, in here, I have a footage of a football player named Kaka, and this one is really good. This reference shows the run cycle in every corner, and the run cycle itself, it's perfectly balanced and natural. Now, breaking down the run cycles, there are five main poses. The first one is the contact one. Pay attention to the body that is a bit up, or the head movement, and the important part, of course, is the legs. As you see, one is on the ground and the other one is approaching to pass the first one. The second one is the passing pose. As it sounds, one leg passes the another one. Again, pay attention to the body figure. The third one is a kick-up pose, where both legs are deattaching themselves from the ground. And the next one is the air pose, where both legs are in the air. And they have a brief pose in there. And the reason you cannot make a run cycle out of a walk cycle is because this pose. Because no matter how you design a walk cycle, you won't be able to lift up both legs in a walk cycle. Take a look at the footpath and how they move. Now the real question is, should I always follow this path to get a run cycle? And the answer is a definite no. You always create a run cycle based on your character design. Take a look at this example. I have a character in here and since I wanted you guys to focus on the legs only, I didn't create the hands. Now take a look at the footpath. As you see, it is much different from what we saw in earlier. Now again, I tried to follow the earlier path and the result was something like this. Both of the run cycles are correct, but as you see, the second one doesn't really fit the character and therefore it looks really unnatural and ugly. We will talk about this section more when it comes to leg animation. Now about the tempo, here we can see the common tempo for each run cycle. Okay, now I'm in Adobe After Effects CC 2018 and please if it's possible use this version or higher than 2018 because we are going to use few things that only available in 2018 and more and now let's import our character so i'm going to click on file and in import section i'm going to click on file again or i just can press ctrl plus i on my keyboard and now i'm going to select the girl character too and i will hit the import now in import kind, make sure it's composition and in layer options, you want to select the editable layer style because you want to be able to edit your artwork and now I'm gonna hit OK. Now let's double click on our composition and alright, here's our character that seems very nice but it's in Photoshop layer and Photoshop layers are a bit harder to work compared to Illustrator or Vector layers. And the main goal in this lesson is that we want to break these Photoshop layers into shape. And obviously one main problem is that we cannot select the Photoshop layer and create a shape from it. So I'm just gonna click on character panel to see how it's designed. Alright, as you see again, it's just compositions inside compositions. And that is perfectly normal when you are working as an animator in the studios or other places, there is a high amount of chance to get a design like this. Now, for one thing for sure, if you're an illustrator yourself, you can change the layer design to your favorite. But my main goal in here is to create a simple and yet a strong rig that can help me to create a run or a walk cycle less than 20 minutes. Now, if we go to hand 1, as you see, we have two lips layers. 
Now what I want to do is that I want to design this arm with shape layers and that is really easy to do. So I'm gonna navigate through this layer by pressing this tiny triangle in here and in mask section as you see we have a mask path. And now I'm gonna select my pen tool and make sure nothing is selected and then I'm going to click on anywhere on my screen to get a shape layer. Now if I click on mask path and I press ctrl plus c to copy that path and then I go to my shape layer and in contents menu I click on path and then I press ctrl plus v as you see we have the exact same shoulder that created with shape and something to mention there are many ways to increase your workflow speed when you are working and there are always few plugins that can help you to increase your work speed and I'm using motion tools version 2 by motion design school this plugin is free make sure you download it if you like it and again I'm not sponsoring anything it's just my personal experience so I'm just gonna to move my anchor points to upper point in here by pressing this square and I'm just gonna change its color by making the Photoshop layer solo and then I'm gonna click on the shape layer and I will change its color by using the eyedropper tool and lastly let's rename it and since we don't need this layer let's just delete it okay let's do this step for the rest of the layers Now something you can do to increase your speed again is that you can type path in the search bar and make sure your layer is selected first and as you see without navigating I have my path in here. Okay, now that we designed the entire arm, it's time to fix the anchor point positions. Now, as you see, my hand consists of four separate shapes. If I wanted to make this hand in one single layer, I had to create one single shape and then inside this shape, I had to start to rebuild again. Well, one thing that I specifically like about the motion design tool is the ability to merge many shapes into one. So if I select my layers and then I press merge, as you see, it just merged my entire layers into one single layer. And now let's rename it to arm, uh, oops, uh, sorry, hands. And now let's change the anchor point position. Oh, oops, sorry again. Let's make sure we have our selection tool selected first. And now let's change it to anchor points by pressing Y on our keyboard. And let's change its anchor point position like this. And now let's rearrange the layers. So we need to move the shoulder above the arm. And lastly, let's copy these layers by pressing Ctrl plus C. And in guard character 2, which is our main comp right now, let's just paste them by pressing Ctrl plus V. And since we don't need this hand anymore, let's just delete it because we have one in here. And now let's go in head section and let's click on the ear so everything seems fine on the ear section because you don't always want to turn everything into shapes so what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna copy and copy it in here and paste them in your character too again and now let's delete it in head section and now let's click on layer 8 and let's see what it is by clicking on this solo icon here okay it's our top hair and let's just rename it first and Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V again. We don't need this hand so let's just close this panel and let's go to the head panel and delete this. And now off to the right eye. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is that I will check the anchor point positions and then I'm going to fix the parenting system. So I'm just gonna parent the pupil and the eyelashes to the eye and now to make the eye move inside the eyeball I'm just gonna create a base eye by just duplicating the eye layer by pressing Ctrl plus D 
and I'm gonna rename it to mask and then I'm gonna move it above the pupil and I will set the math track to alpha now in that way whenever I move my pupil oops, sorry again as you see it doesn't go out of the eyeball anymore so I'm just gonna do this step for the next eye and then I'm gonna copy them into girl character 2 Okay, now we have nose, lips. Okay, let's fix the anchor point positions before we forget. Okay, so I am just gonna move it in here and for the lips in here and for the face in here. Okay, and this is supposed to be our neck. So I will rename it to neck and I will fix its anchor point position like this. So let's just copy paste them in main comp and now as you see our layer order isn't good but I'm just gonna click on here to change the layer names and now I'm gonna move them behind the air like so now let's delete the head comp and now we have a body and as you see it didn't spare right so I'm just gonna rename it and we have a skirt so we need to turn these layers into shape because we need to animate the skirt later on using the path animation And now let's do this step for our backhand. And now let's go to our next part and it's our legs. I'm just going to delete them because I will create them using rubber hose later on. And lastly this is our bottom hair. Let's just rename it and now let's copy it and paste it. And now let's just move it behind the neck. So right now we need to move the ear. And now we have the layer 4. Let's just so let to see what it is. And apparently the layer 4 is nothing. <laughs> Interesting. So I'm just going to delete it. So the backhand needs to go behind the body. So where is the body? Okay, I selected body as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color label. So I avoid issues like this later on.
Okay, now on our last step, we just need to create legs and then check the parenting and then our rig is ready. So let's go to parenting first, then we will design the legs later on. So we have hands and our hands needs to follow the arm and the arm needs to follow the shoulder and of course the shoulder needs to follow the body and the skirt needs to follow the body as well and back hand needs to follow the back shoulder no 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 sorry sorry uh, back hand needs to follow the back arm and back arm needs to follow the shoulder and the shoulder needs to follow the body and let's make sure the anchor point is in the right place And now let's test it by pressing R to bring up rotation and yeah, everything is fine. And now let's fix the anchor point position for I. Same as the ear and wait a minute, the layer 4 we just deleted was our ear strike I believe. So <laughs> this is why you, you want to always rename your layer first. Now let's just find our girl character 2 in project panel and let's bring that up. And let's just parent it to the ear and now let's rename it. And lastly we need to change the color labeling again. And we are going to move the top her anchor point in here and nose, lips, neck seems fine. And bottom hair in here. Okay, in next video we are going to create legs. Okay, now it's time to create our legs. But before that, let's just finish our parenting. We didn't get to finish it in last video. So I'm just going to parent the eyes to the face. And the face needs to follow the neck. And neck needs to follow the body. And the bottom hair needs to follow the top hair. And top hair needs to follow the face. And nose, lips, and ear need to follow the face. Okay, now it's time to create legs. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do now, if I hide the skirt layer, and on body, as you see, the edges of the body isn't really equal. So I need to make something for it. So I'm just gonna create a crotch for it. So I'm just gonna go to my rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw a rectangle like this. And I'm gonna color the crotch and I'm going to move it behind the body. And let's change its co color. And now let's go into rubber hose. I'm gonna make our front leg. Now let's move the hip in here and the ankle in here now let's select the front leg and let's change its color and now let's go to contents and in style let's duplicate the base holes and let's add a trim path and now let's change its color to orange. And now let's cut the trim path. And there's another free plugin on BattleAxe.co where you download the rubber hose and it's called Butt Capper. And it helps you to change your stroke cap. So I'm just gonna select the base hose too and change its stroke cap to this. Okay, now we just need to create a foot. So I'm just gonna click on a pen tool in here and make sure the fill option is off. And let's increase our stroke width to 15. And now let's put a point in here and one in here. 
And now let's just round it. And now let's make it a bit bigger. Now let's just adjust it by using our right and left arrow keys. Lastly, let's just rename it. And now let's duplicate it. And now let's just change its color label and move it in here. And now let's duplicate the foot one more time. And let's just call it the back foot and let's rename our front foot to to back foot as well. And now let's just adjust the back foot. Now let's finish the legs parenting. Okay, but we need to move them first. But before that, let's just fix our color labeling for our foots. And I'm gonna select them and I'm going to make sure that I will put them behind the body. So after the parenting, let's parent the hip to the crotch. So front hip and back hip, let's parent them to the crotch and obviously the crotch to the body and let's parent the foot to the ankle. And let's do this step for our back foot. Okay, now we are ready for animating. Okay, so in this video we are going to animate the body, but before that we can compare the body movement in a run cycle to a ball movement. So if I play my animation, as you see, my ball moves with the same speed in the entire time and it doesn't really look natural. It's because I didn't adjust its speed yet. So the goal of this lesson is that we need to learn how we can adjust the speed settings using the graph editor. So if I select my keyframes and then I right click on them and in keyframe assistance I select the easy ease or I just press F9 on my keyboard as you see it looks better now but if we go to graph editor in here and make sure your graph editor type is on speed now Diving into a bit physics we all know that speed is equal to distance over time and that is all the graph editor is about the speed of your object over the direction that your object is moving. So if I select my keyframes one more time and I make them linear by holding control and pressing left click on my mouse button, as you see now my graph editor shows that my object is going to move with the same speed over time. And now if I easy ease them again, now it says that the object slowly starts to gain speed and then it loses speed over time. And I think the main problem is this mid keyframe where the object loses its speed. So I want to adjust that. So if I select my first keyframe by clicking on this square in here, as you see, it selected my first keyframe. And I'm just going to drag it like this So I'm just going to do this step for middle keyframe and I'm going to drag it. Oh, oops, make sure you're not moving your mouse cursor up. Don't be scared to play with graph editor. I'm just going to move it till I get a symmetrical curve. Now 
Now, let's, now, as you see, the object comes up a, a bit slowly and then it accelerates really fast. And the body movement in a rolling cycle is something like this ball. It comes really slowly up and then moves down in a faster value. So now back to the project, the first thing I'm going to do is that I need to fix my composition setting. Right now it's just too small. So let's just right click on the girl character 2 and then let's press composition settings and now let's just change it to one of the after effects presets and let's just choose the 4k one and let's leave the frame rate at 24 and let's make our animation 3 seconds by changing the duration to 0072 and if you want to have the normal time indicator instead of frames just hold the control key and then click in here so let's bring that back to frame again and let's just delete the background and then let's turn off the transparency so we can see it better So right now I'm gonna hide the unnecessary panels because we don't really have much space to see. So I'm going to active the shy function in here and then by clicking on this ghost icon in here I'm going to hide the unnecessary layers. Okay, now we are going to animate a normal run cycle and the tempo for a normal run cycle is 8 frames per step. So let's just bring up the markers. Now markers are not going to help much in leg animation but I'm just going to put them anyway because it's good for the body movement. I'm just going to move the first marker in here and it's better to move it to the frame 24 and I'll tell you why in a second. Since we want to loop this animation and the way I'm going to animate the legs later on it's for the best we have one second in space. And now let's just move four more frames by typing plus four in here. And I will do this step again. I will rename my markers. Okay, now let's just shorten our time indicator by pressing B and N. And now let's bring up position for our body by pressing P on our keyboard. And let's set a keyframe for it. So in the contact pose, as you see, the body is slightly gonna go up. So here's my first keyframe and I'm just gonna consider it as my down pose. So I will just move it towards the passing marker. And I will move my body eight steps up by using the arrow keys on my keyboard and then I'm going to copy it and paste it in here and then I'm gonna copy the entire keyframes one more time and paste them again in here. And now let's bring up the rotation and let's make the body lean a bit forward. And lastly, let's make our head counter rotate the body. Now let's go to the graph editor and easy ease them. Now you know how to adjust it. Great, now we are ready for the leg animation. Okay, now it's time to animate the legs. So what I did between these videos, I just tried the unnecessary layers so we don't waste any more time. 
Now, there are many ways to animate delays in After Effects. One of them is that you can create the exact poses and then adjust the legs, but a better way is that you can create one leg and then copy the keyframes and paste it to the other. And that is what I'm going to do for this video. Something to mention is that I'm going to ignore the kickoff pose because After Effects can animate that pose itself. So I'm gonna select the back ankle and hip and then I'm gonna bring up position by pressing P and it's for the best if we separate the dimensions and work with individual values and it's much easier to work with the graph editor later on. So the first keyframe I'm gonna put on contact pose and I'm not going to move anything. I know the contact pose is different but trust me After Effects is gonna do the work itself. And on passing pose again I know that I have to create a leg that passes another one but I'm gonna make the contact pose so I'm just gonna select the ankle and I'm gonna move it up and as you see the leg doesn't bend and it's because it's rubber hose settings so let's fix that by going into a fix control and if you don't have it just go into window tab and select it in here now let's just set the hose length to 350 and bend radius to 30 and realism to 40. One of the common mistakes that new designers do when it comes to round cycles or even walk cycle is that they don't move the hips. Keep in mind, hips need to move as well. But this time, I'm happy with my hip position, so I won't change it. I'm just gonna put a keyframe on them. Now, on the kickoff, I will just create the passing pose. So I'm just gonna select the ankle and I will move it slowly like so and the hip needs to move a bit forward and I will just create the air pose like so same the hips and then I'm just gonna finish the loop by copy and paste the keyframes in here Now, you might say that my leg animation doesn't follow the f normal path that we have talked about it before. And now it's a common mistake number two, and that is the important one. Keep in mind, always stick with your character design. In here, I have a car cartoon character, and if I want to make the legs closer and give them a really natural movement, you won't be really able to see the leg movement. So I needed to exaggerate the movement a bit more. Now, let's just easy ease our keyframes, and then I will go to graph editor, and I will click on the icon that says convert the selected keyframes to the auto bezier. And now let's just create an arc for our leg movement and make it a bit better. Now let's just easy ease the hips. Now let's just select the keyframes for the ankle. 
and on the front leg ankle first let's adjust its settings and now let's bring up position by pressing p and then let's separate its dimensions and then i'm going to copy and paste the keyframes and let's do this step for a hip now if you do it correctly both legs will move together now to offset the legs we said that the common run cycle on each step takes 8 frames so I'm gonna offset them to our kickoff pose which is 8 frame and then I'm gonna copy and paste the keyframes one more time and that is why because I said that I want to start on 24 frames so that I can see all of the keyframes now select the back leg and push the hip a bit forward till you get a good passing position Perfect. Now keep these tips in your mind. One, every character has a different run cycle. Don't always stick to the path. You know the rules, you are free to break them. Number two, remember to move the hips. That is really important. And number three, if you are animating in all traditional pose to pose, remember to set a ruler or a guide like my walk cycle class to yourself so you don't accidentally stretch one leg more than the other. Now, in the next video, we are going to animate the hands and the skirt. So now it's time to animate the skirt and the hands. So I have a skirt layer in here, but I'm just going to hide these layers and I will bring back the shoulders. As you probably know, hands are moving opposite of the legs movement. So let's bring up rotation and put a keyframe in here. And on kickoff, let's move it forward. And let's finish the loop by copying the first keyframes and paste it in here. Uh, let's do this step for the back shoulder. And now let's easy ease them. Now about the skirt, I know it might be hard for some of you to animate a path, but there is a really easy way to do that. So if you have an After Effects 2018 or higher version, Go to window tab and then select create nodes from path. Now go to a skirt path, select it. And then click on points that follow the nodes. Now as you see after the face gives me a few nodes that can help me to adjust the path of my skirt. So I don't need the shoulders anymore. So let's just hide it. And same as the back one. So let's just delete the unnecessary nodes and let's rename the necessary ones. Now, I will just move the nose until I get a desirable movement for my skirt.
Alright, good. Now it's time to animate the hair. Now in this video, it's time to animate our hair. So the first thing I need to do is that I need to adjust the eyes because layer order is on right. And let's unshine the hairs. And let's hide this skirt layer. So what I want to do now is that I want to make this part of the hair move. But as you see, the, we have the entire top hair designed together so that I can just use the rotation. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to select the pen tool and I will draw a mask around the part that I want to move. Now let's duplicate it and on the top hair 1 in mask tab let's check the invert option. Now the layer 1 is gonna hide the mask and shows the rest of the layer while the top hair 2 will do the exact opposite. So if I move the anchor point in here now I can move the hair like so. Now let's just set a keyframe for it. Now about the bottom hair, select it and go to your effects and preset tab and if you don't have it, just go to window and select it in here. Now I'm using a video copilot script that can help me to access my effects and presets faster. So I'm just going to add a wave warp effect. Now if I solo the layer, the first option considered as the power of the wave and the second one is something like the frequency. So I'm just going to leave it to 20 and 450. As you see, it's good, but it can be really better by adding a position value to it. So let's bring up position and give it a bit more movement. Now, for the last part, let's create a perfect loop. Let's just increase our time indicator and then I'm going to select everything and then I'm going to trim the layers by pressing Alt plus open bracket. And then I'm just going to move it in here and I'm going to go to end of the my time indicator and I'm just going to extend the layers by pressing Alt plus close bracket. Now I'm going to press U to bring up everything. Now I'm just going to add the loop expression. So hold Alt and press on the stopwatch. Now type loop capital O out open parenthesis quote mark cycle quote mark close parenthesis and then copy it by right clicking and selecting the copy expressions only and then paste them to the other keyframes by pressing Ctrl plus V. Now let's just delete the markers by pressing right click in here and here's our final result.